Hello there. Printship machine is printship machine has finally had another failure. And I think this one's pretty unique. The Bowden tube wore out to the point where a loop of filament actually extruded itself. Thought that was kind of cute. Part of the failure that you really only get on a part ejecting Prusa Mini. This is from uh, Cannon Fodder. He's been my workhorse for some time now. This particular print shift has never printed any abrasive materials. It's been just spool after spool of black cut G, but it's also entirely stock, except for my print shift part ejection system, of course. Anyways, I've had a pack of parts for this planned failure for a while. Figured now's as good a time to put them to use. I was thinking about replacing our hot end with the Revo Micro. If you're thinking about adding a Revo to a regular Mini, this should help out. I don't think we're going to see a dramatic improvement in performance, but this is more about convenience. Mini's claim to fame are the hot swap nozzles, so you can very easily change nozzle sizes. I want that on my workhorse. To make that possible, we have this E3D adapter, E3D Revo adapter. Grab this off printables, I'll put the link down below. It has E3D logo on it, which is nice, but more importantly it uses the stock Prusa Mini fans. So the only thing we need to rewire are the uh, heater and the thermistor. I'm also going to take this opportunity to throw in the MM10. So what this is, is it lets you use a 10 millimeter push fit connector for the Bowden tube. So instead of just replacing this tube, and this tube is replaceable, Prusa will send you replacements. Instead of using the compression fitting with the little olives on there, I'm going to replace it with a bit of Capricorn tubing. These, I believe, are all the parts that I'll need. Two square nuts just to hold this guy on. Um, you can just have it threaded into the plastic, but I'll use metal when I can. I've been very happy with my Orbiter Revo Mini. The other benefit on this is so I can plop in a hardened obsidian nozzle. Obsidian? They put an X in there instead of an S. Very edgy. The other thing is that the Revo mount is a good bit lighter than the stock Mini cooler. And the new Revo completely replaces the cold side, so all of this gets to pop off. We are going to reuse many of the parts. Not all, but a lot. Okay, this screw is a lot longer than I was expecting, but all right. But first up, we're going to remove the entirety of the old hot end. We're going to keep the pin to probe, the pin to mount, and the fan. So we will be popping the thermistor and heater out from there, but that's it. I think I need to also take the fan out. I'll be putting this fan back, but in order to get at the screws holding the uh, Close to the action. I feel like there's way more play in there than there should be. So we're not going to reuse this guy. So these two screws I'm going to mount in right there with these two M3 nuts. Actually, I'm going to remount that right now just to get a good look at it. So you have two square nuts just lining up with these little holes. Wow. Those are loose as crap. So if you've been running your mini a long time, make sure your uh, smooth rods are tight. I can still move them, but it's a lot better. Yeah, so we're still going to use this guy. Alright, so we're going to come back to this. I want to get the... Well, now we're going to leave this aside for now. I'll do the full physical install of the Revo, and then go back to the uh, electronics and swap the wires out. I think that's the best order. Who knows, we'll see. To see the amount of play in there, but 
can focus on that. I mean, this tube is just about to burst. Like there's by just amount I mean clearly it already has. <laughs> Anyways. So I'm gonna do here first. One worrying about the Revo Mini. This is a five volt fan. We're not gonna use that fan, so we don't have to worry about it. But one of the nicer things is it comes with a five volt fan, five volt regulator for the fan. You know, can take 12 or 24 volts in and output five volts out. So nice that it's included. What we need to concern ourselves with is the heater. Oh, and that's nice. It already comes with ferrules, so we can reuse the Prusa's, uh, um, I don't remember what kind of connector that's called. And for the thermistor, we have the two-pin connector. It's not a locking connector, but I think it'll be alright. We'll look at that a bit later. It has two clips on there. And this is a just something real nice. So you know it's 24 volt, 40 watt. We can check it. We look at it. I'm gonna take the. Uh, I don't really want to take that off. Look at this cap off. So this is a real pain to install this way. I should have put the uh, Revo in first, but actually threading the Revo in here. I'm going to take the nozzle out, and there's a little groove here where that clips on. So I'll take that off just so we can install it more easily. You can see it's just threading in. It's a really nice solid mount, and so this is a bit of a pain to get back on, I'm guessing, but we will do it. So if you clip that on, it'll sneak right back into place. And then we need to ensure that these are connected. But stick those guys over there. Also need some zip ties. And so the fan gets mounted right in place. Threading into plastic, I think this screw is a little bit short, so I'm gonna get a longer one. So I think it was a 12 up to a 15 millimeter. That just gives you a little bit extra bite. Don't forget to route your wires. So now one thing I'd like to do is keep these connectors out on this side of the uh, this little strain relief guy. And the reason for that is because if there's flexing at the base of the connectors, that'll concentrate. Uh... Is this way too close? A little extreme close up. I think that would concentrate and cause these guys to break. Well, if I make them too long, they'll get eaten by the fan. So that is the new hot end, wired and ready. Very painless. Put this here. All right. So I'm gonna be doing the wiring, and getting that in. We're going to take the electronics off. Makes it easier to put this all the way up. And this is motorized, so if you remember to do this before you start, you'll have an easier time. That's okay though. If we look in our electronics, the blue and purple wires are from the uh, bed uh, heater and thermistor. Replace those. This other guy is your hot end. And so I don't remember what this connector is called, but we're going to remove and reuse it. And then this is your thermistor for the hot end. This is what we're talking about with the locking connector. See those little teeth on it? You can't pull it down without pushing this little lever in. 
Probably too hard to make out in here. But let's get those guys out. Sorry to reuse this. So go slow and gentle with this. There's your Bruce Mini Hot End. Ooh, that's been through you know, probably a couple hundred yards of filament. At least uh, 50 spools. Still gonna keep it around because there's nothing wrong with this part. It's old, it's worn. I did add a heat shield to it. Alright. Now, we have to get all the wiring back inside here. So the sheath is twisted in order to make it tighter. And hold on to the cables more. I'm sort of untwisting it with this, but also I'm just gonna give myself a fighting chance. The next thing I want to do is close up the electronics, and then we will replace this motor housing in order to add the uh, MM10, and then we're done. All right, so these ferrules go right in there and retighten down. This should be really quite tight, so put some extra in there. But once this is in, it's a simple plug. I'm gonna remove you because you're just in my way. And this guy again doesn't have uh, the locking pins on it, but it is the correct pitch, so we can just plop it in. One thing you should note is both the thermistor and the heater are resistors, so polarity does not matter on them. We have just a bit of extra wire that I'm going to tuck down underneath. Looks good. And we are ready to close up the electronics. Looking good. All right, let's get this back in focus for you guys. Look, that is the hard part done. This is the extruder route, MM10 mod. So we're replacing this back plate of the extruder. Um, not the back plate, the mid plate of the extruder. I guess I didn't need to cut these zip ties. Oops. Whatever. That happened. Probably been a really real pain to get around it otherwise. So this is a push fit connector. There's one on the Revo as well. Important part about this is it is a pass-through connector. So I can pass the tubing all the way through. And if you can see in here, which I mean it's all black so I doubt you can, the tubing actually goes in to a recess and I like to do that to give myself a fighting chance of getting this in correctly. To get this down, I to push that, lock that down, lock that down, push that in. Eh, that's easier than I expected to be honest. So that's going to go right in there. And we'll cut the tubing to length, this is just a scrap I had. First we need to take the motor off. So this whole assembly is held on by these two screws. And we need to remove this part. This is what we're replacing, we're taking all the hardware out of it. Alright, the GoPro's overheating so we gotta work faster. Okay. The amount of black pet G dust coming out of here is pretty extreme. And we have to save all of these parts because we're going to reuse all of these parts. I think we're going to add some grease to these guys and clean that out real good. Looks like a lot of grinding. White lithium grease. I'm guessing you want to grease these more often than never. I'm only putting grease on the uh, motor side, not the filament side. My tool of choice for getting the uh, nuts into their nut traps. Some knife X pliers. Looking good so far. I can go right back on there. The other two screws. Yeah. 
Let's move this guy all the way up to make sure we have all the plans in there. Yeah, just realized that was probably all off camera. Whatever. You guys know how the test work. Hopefully. Alright, so then this guy. We're ready to cut it to length. Stick it in the push fit. So make sure you're at the farthest extent. And I'm sort of following the curve. I'm just gonna grab and make it just a little bit long. You don't need a fancy tubing cutter. But if you got one, you might as well use it. I wanted to point out the difference in the Capricorn tubing. What can we see from this? It's a much tighter tolerance tubing. So it won't wear out as quickly, and it'll also keep your filament from uh, bouncing around as much. Here's the joy of the push fit. And that is the build sorted. I'm going to move this guy back to his home, up top, re-level the bed, and get a test print going. The only thing that's left to do on this is dial in the Pinda Pro, but you can do that just by running the start. I'll take the uh, regular bed out and put it on top for that, just to make sure I dial it in properly. What? Cannon fodder? Cannon fodder is back and fully functional. Thanks for watching, and happy printing.